Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Lauder Hill TV. I am your host, Melissa Jane, and I'm happy to be back. We have an incredible interview lined up for you tonight. We have Commissioner Melissa Dunn on the show, and you are going to be blown away by what she's been able to achieve in just a few years of becoming one of the commissioners in the city of Lauder Hill. So I'm very, very excited. Before we go into anything further, I want to welcome each and every person. Good evening to you, Barbara. I was just about to send you a message to let you to see if you are able to join. Let us take the first few moments to share the post. Maybe just tag a few people. We do really want to have a nice audience for, for everybody uh, to be here to see this interview. It's going to be a good one. Um, share it to a few people on Instagram, Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, and uh, YouTube. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We are uh, looking for the StreamYard link. All right, check the email before. You know what? Let me just go ahead and send this one more time. So I'm just going to send out the link one more time just to be sure. And uh I'm going to go ahead and play some commercials and we're going to come back in just a few moments. But get in, get, get ready, get inside and get comfortable, everybody. Okay? At Shamsla Financial Services, we specialize in credit services and insurance services. As a financial social worker, I'm here to help you maximize your credit score with thinking outside of the box. Located in the city of Lauder Hill, Mercy's Healthcare Registry has been serving the AIDS community for over 15 years. As a staffing agency, we hire HHAs, CNAs, LPNs, and RNs. Give us a call today, 954-572-3699. Wonderful, wonderful. Our guest is here in the back. I see her. Welcome again, everyone. I am your host, Melissa Jane. And we're, you're tuned into Lot of Hill TV every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And we have a good time sharing great information about what's happening in Lauder Hill, as well as amazing people. And of course, we feature businesses from time to time as well. So we've got a lot of things happening today. We have a, an incredible um, show ahead for you. Let me go ahead and turn my phone down. And uh, we are going to bring up our guest in just a couple of seconds. Welcome to you, Barbara, again. Good to have you. Welcome to you, Madeline, our Creole translator. We'll be up in a little while to give us a complete uh, translation of the show. And welcome to you, Marcia. Good evening to you, to everyone. Good evening to A Better Concept PR. Good evening to you. Nice to have you. Good evening. Uh, I finally made it tonight. Wonderful, wonderful to have you. That's amazing. I hope we to have a lot of people coming in to, to show our commissioner some support. Hey, a lady song. You know, we don't call me lady song anymore. Uh, Eric. Okay. Welcome, Eric. Just returned home from the Boogie Down Bronx. Did I miss anything? No, we, we saved it all for you, Eric. <laughs> Good to have you here. And uh, it's Karen. Oh, hey, welcome, Karen. Good to have you. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, guys, without further ado, I am going to bring up my guest tonight. Welcome, 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 Commissioner Melissa Dunn. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on the show. It is my pleasure. It's not your first time here. Well, we would call it something completely different before. <laughs> but we are we finally merged into Lauda Hill TV. So I'm excited and definitely excited to have you back. A lot has happened as well, right? A lot has happened. We are uh, making moves in Lauda Hill. Wow. Totally amazing. Uh, hi, Melissa. You rock. Absolutely good to have you again. Now, we, we're going to start off by, um, and we're very, very relaxed here. We're very comfortable. The, the, the audience also gets involved, Commissioner. They have questions and comments and whatever, that, and we bring them up to the screen and they get involved. So we're kind of like really, really kind of laid back in this, in this show. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start by, uh, if you could just introduce yourself to everybody and just give us a little bit of background before we get into the commission things. Yeah. So uh, my name is Commissioner Melissa P. Dunn. I'm one of the five elected officials in the city of Lauderhill. 
Um, I was born in Jamaica, migrated to America when I was about 10 years old. My, um, my father is a retired police officer from Jamaica and my stepfather is retired army in the US. So I had a chance to live all over the place. And, um, you know, I have spent my career, my life actually serving people, mm -hmm. serving communities, and um, it is my personal mission. And so um, I have a company called MD Marketing Network, where we provide marketing training and consulting for governments as well as nonprofits uh, with the intent of using my skills to serve the world. Well, and, yeah, absolutely. Um, that you know, moving forward to commission role was the, the uh, you know a good step for me to take, and so I'm happy to have the opportunity to serve. Yeah, it sounded like a, a kind of a natural progression as far as um, you serving, because before being becoming a commissioner, you were chamber um, director. Is that is that? Yeah, well, right? I was on the board of directors of the Lottie Hill Regional Chamber of Commerce, now rebranded Lottie Hill Chamber, oh, okay. and I served as president of right. the chamber. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of involvement in the community, providing services for for, for, for Lauder Hill and, and surrounding areas. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's great to see the, the development and it's great to see that there are so many resources and things available in the city of Lauder Hill. And certainly I take advantage of it. And this is what, mm -hmm. also a part of what Lauder Hill TV does is to really get all of those things out there even further. Of course, the, the Lord, Lord of Hill Communications Department does a fantastic job with all of their different channels, whether it's email, whether it's social media, whether it's uh, text messages, but uh, we're trying to do a little bit more as well with, with, uh, with online uh, broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And listen, I've seen you evolve because I remember when I was a chamber president, you were a chamber member. So I remember you and I having lots and lots of conversations about where you were going to take your brand and and your transition from corporate into this digital space. So I, you know, congratulations on um, the evolution of your brand. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we're going to talk about one of the programs that I want to go, that's going to take it to the next level. So I really, really appreciate that. Let's welcome a few more people to the show. Um, let's see who's just joined. Uh, Tashina Morris is here. Great job uh, with the applause there. Welcome Tashina. No, I think that she is. is Tashanya, she, is, Tashanya, Tashanya Morris. Yeah. She's actually one of the co chairs for LHPP, and she's a Lauder Hill Shines alumni, um, cohort number two. Okay. That's where mm -hmm. I heard that name. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show, and it's good to have you. Tell a friend and don't be a stranger. Of course, welcome to Paula Scott Blackwood. Good to have you, my dear. Good evening, good ev everyone. Nice to have you as well, Paula Scott. They're all rolling in. So that's why we take a little time at the beginning to let people get a chance to come on in. Welcome, Martha Laurent. Uh, good to have you. Good night, she says. And thank you all for sharing. Continue to share. Continue to let people know that we're here and we're just about to really, really get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my notes because we got a lot to go through today. So uh, Commissioner Dunn, the one program that's coming up really, really fast. We want to start with that, and then we're going to go back through all of the other programs that you uh, that you've sort of spearheaded. So let's start with uh, Lauder Hill Shines. Um, tell us all about Lauder Hill Shines. Well, I not only will tell you about Lauder Hill Shines, but I'm going to make an announcement. Woo! Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I hope it's what I want to hear. I think I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to make an announcement. So, but before I do, Lottie Hill Shines is really um, the type of program that I wish I had when I started my business. It offers support to small businesses in terms of education, mentorship, and access. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I started my agency in 2024, um, I thought that government contracting might be something I want to pursue, but I had no clue, right? Um, when I first started my business, I, you know, knew enough to to, to lay the foundation in terms of marketing, but I, I I did not have a business plan. You know, I didn't have the right accounting system. In fact, I think it was maybe two or three years into my business before I even, you know, started putting things in Excel instead of writing them in my notebook. 
Okay. And and so we found out during COVID that a lot mm-hmm. of businesses were not prepared. Yeah. And so they missed out on the support that government was offering. Mm. Um, and so Lot of Hill Shines is the answer to all of that. Mm-hmm. We help small businesses start and scale in the city of Lot of Hill. Uh, to date, we've graduated six cohorts of over 80 businesses, a majority of whom are brand new businesses to the city of Lauder Hill, meaning that this program is helping to increase the tax base of the city, okay. meaning that this program is helping to boost the economy because, you know, when I survey some of the folks from Tashanya's cohort, for example, cohort number two, a lot of them have gone on to hire people, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, yeah, no, I started the business not in 2004. In 2014 is when I started my company. We we're about nine nine or 10 years old, just okay. about. But anyways, Lauder Hill, Lauder Hill Shines um, really is uh, a capacity building program. And it's, mm-hmm. it's truly what I would have wanted mm-hmm. when I started my business. Um, So we have um, opened the application process for our seventh cohort. They're scheduled to begin on the 12th of September. Melissa, we had 73 applications. Wow. 73 applications. Is that the highest that it's ever been so far? Well, there's 125 people on our waiting list at one point. Wow. Um, But that didn't necessarily translate into applications, right? Okay. This time, we did not have a strong waiting list, but we had a lot of people who actually applied and good quality candidates. Um, and if you remember, I said up front that I'm only accepting 25 people. I know. And I'm like, there's so many people. What's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> and at the info session that you attended, uh, I think there was only 30 people there. Okay. Right. So I was like, OK, well, we'll find our 25 from amongst this, because if uh-huh. you really are hungry, you will make sure that you're in the room. It's the right. way that I see it. So people mm-hmm. didn't realize that was a part of my interview process. Oh. Right. I'm giving away secrets to your audience. <laughs> <laughs> so for next a- time, at least I'll know next time. <laughs> Listen, that's a part of my interview process, because if I'm an entrepreneur and somebody is offering me a program, which, by the way, you know that I'm also a coach. So yeah. if I did develop this course for myself, I would have easily charged three to six thousand dollars a pop. True. And I would have True. people would have paid for it because they get results, right? Okay. <laughs> In any case, um, you know, we had about 30 something people show up for the info session. And I don't know if you remember, but in the beginning, I we intentionally did not have a formal setup. I just wanted to see how people would interact with each other. Right. Whether or not you were, um, you know, standing back and shy, whether you were staying with the people that you came with, because that's telling me that's giving me a baseline of where Uh you are right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So. 73 applicants, only 25 slots. And I know you applied. I did. Not only did you apply, but you were proactive in getting your business license in the city of Lauder Hill already. I wanted to have a a head start. (laughs) (laughs) And you showed up for the interview. And then since then, you have gotten very involved in Lauder Hill Health and Prosperity Partnership. And so it's very easy for me to say yes. (laughs) Welcome. Well, I thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. I thank you. I, I, I was so intentional this, this time around because I did take a look at it a, f- a few years ago and Remember. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And this year I said, everything is just lined up so perfectly. I'm ready for it. And I just claimed it. I'm like, I already believed that I had it. So even if, even if I wasn't given the space, I would have been following along with so, somehow or other, I would have been doing what I needed to do to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, but so you know, that's it. how, that's how Brandy Moore, who is, she's opening Liquid Paradise. That's how Brandy got in because oh. she came to all of the dining Lauder Hills. She came to every single one. So she went through dining with cohort number two. Mm-hmm. And then by the time the applications came for cohort number three, it was easy because she was already showing initiative that she was hungry for the help. 
Right. So that so guys, if you're listening, that's going to be another tip for you. If you really want to get in, just be proactive and just 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 claim it, claim it. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate you for that. I'm I'm so ready. I've been preparing all this time, so I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let me just see, see what we're saying in the chat. Congratulations, says Barbara. Thank you so much. I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm here for it. Woo woo, <laughs> says Paula Scott. Um, Madeline, um, welcome MJ to Lord Hill Shines. Yay, you deserve this opportunity. She is also a, 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 a former cohort. What yeah, kind of, she's an alumni. She alumni. Um, I think she was. She might have been in cohort. I'm sorry about the background. I think she might have <laughs> been in cohort number five, right, Maddie? Okay. All right. Be present. Love it. All right. So yes, indeed, Lauder Hill Shines is is uh, is starting. Um, when is it starting, um, Commissioner? The reception is Tuesday at six o'clock. And 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 to be clear, that's required attendance. If you don't come to the if you don't come to the welcome reception, you will automatically be dropped from the course. And uh, as as a matter of fact, just mentioning um, being dropped at that point within the series of it's twelve week program. Mm -hmm. There are there there are possibilities that people can still be dropped partway through. Is that correct? Yes, uh, I'm very intentional about wanting people to be successful. Oh yes, cohort three. I'm very intentional about <coughs> wanting people to be successful in business. And when you're looking to start or scale a business, you have to be a person of your word. You've got to be able to meet deadlines. You've got to be able to meet the specifications of the contract. Okay. You, you've got to be able to meet the specifications of the, the agreement that you made with your clients. And so the way that you do one thing, Melissa, is the way that you do everything. Mm -hmm. And so we are clear about our expectations and we hold people accountable. So um, one of the graduation requirements is that you come to the uh, welcome reception. We send you the information way in advance. And um, if you don't attend, then I'm going to take that as a sign that you're not interested and we will drop you immediately. Okay. No, no excuses, none of that. And then secondly, halfway through, um, we will go through and look at um, your attendance and if you are not on track with watching the curriculum online, if you are not a tra on track with doing the assignments, then um, we will drop you. And I will give you plenty of notice, right? Mm -hmm. Plenty of opportunities. Um, but, you know, we want to make room for people who are, are hungry for success. And quite frankly, I put a lot of my personal time and energy into this. Still, even after people graduate, I'm still pouring in. And, and so we want to make sure that we have people in the room who will um, take advantage of the opportunity that we're presenting. Wonderful. All right. Before we go any further, I want to just pay, play a little clip of the information that's on the website. So just stand by just about one minute of, of this um, first interview. My name is Commissioner Melissa P. Dunn. The city of Lauderdale is 100% committed to expanding our entrepreneurial ecosystem. Lauderdale Shines is a part of that strategy. The most valuable thing I got out of the program was learning how to do general contracting, contracting with the government. They went through the entire process. They showed you online, showed you exactly what to do. So if you had any questions, you know, you get out your computer and you could just follow along. This program provides like a lot of great detailed information as far as coding, inspections, um, how to just prepare your business to be presented for the community. We figured our brewery would definitely take a lot away from this program and also help um, meet new other business owners. Sometimes we go into business and we don't think about all the finances that comes along with that. So going through that module and having... We're going to leave it right there. I want to encourage you guys to go to the um, the, the the website. It is right there at the Lauder Hill website. Just go to, again, we've been going through the, the Lauder Hill City website each and every time we have a, a, a city official on. Go to lauderhill-fl.gov 
and then go to the commission button and go to uh, Commissioner Melissa P. Dunn and you will see all of her programs. Just click on Lord Hill Shines to see this first interview, which is about three and a half, four minutes long. And then we have a second one. And then I have something else very, very special to show you in a little bit. But uh, it's just so good to see all of the, um, the, the people that have, that have gone through the pro listen we could spend the whole hour speaking about lord hill shines by itself yeah so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this portion <laughs> up <laughs> but it's so exciting um so again i encourage everybody to just go just go through and, and look for yourself um anything else to say on, on lord hill shines before we move on to something else uh commissioner yeah so we are going to open the wait list for cohort eight um in about another two or three weeks so there'll be another class starting in um in the spring and uh you know in the meantime there will be dine in lauder hill that will happen the second friday of every month starting in october we usually um do dine-ins every second um friday at noon and we choose a, a lot of Hill Shines alumni business. So, you know, we have a couple of restaurants that was in the program. So we'll go there and, and if not, we'll go to a regular Lauda Hill business. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So let me just welcome a few more people that just joined. Uh, Michelle McNabb, thank you so much for joining my British sister. Hey, uh, Millie, to told you big things. <laughs> uh, Paula Scott, really loving the mission uh, outline of this program, wonderful job. Uh, Commissioner Dunn, uh, a better concept PR. She she sure does top notch coaching and training. Wonderful to see all of your support here. Uh, Kiva's here. Welcome, Kiva. Good evening to you. And Paula says, excellent. You've brought such integrity and class to Lauder Hill with this program, leveraging and play uh, leveraging the playing field. Lauder Hill is shining. Love that. Oh, right. Paula, I'm going to use that. Lauder Hill <laughs> is shining. You just gave me a new a new <laughs> campaign, Paula. I like that. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. All right. I do want to play just a little bit more, just one little piece more from, from our mayor on this subject. Maybe just another 30 seconds and then we're going to move on. Stop, stop by everybody. I'm excited uh, about Lauder Hill shines because business people are getting the opportunity to improve their skills. And by improving their skills, they increase the probability of the success of their business. I've seen the program grow from its beginning. It's continuing to grow. The business owners are, are proud. I've got nothing but unmatched support with Lauda Hill Shine. There's a wealth of information in all of the courses and Commissioner Dunn is a fantastic leader and will guide you through everything. We had no idea how many. Yes, indeed. I could I could watch the whole thing, but uh, again, go to the Lauda Hill ch uh, channel. As a, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to drop that in the chat for you guys to, yeah. to go check it's, that out. It's Lauda Hill hyphen FL dot gov backslash lot of hill shines that's like oh, the shortened url the shortened one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. and the shortened url to get to my page too melissa is okay. lot of hill hyphen fl dot gov backslash done d-u-n-n -N. oh it would be straight to my page good let me go ahead and put that in um did i spell that correctly I thank you marie i appreciate that Thank you for the kudos. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm loving, I'm loving this today. This is this is a good, a good crowd. Welcome, Anne Marie Chambers. Good to have you. All right. All right. So let us um, you know what? I'm gonna just indulge you all just one more second. I want to just play a little bit from the interview you did with Juwan Strader. Ah, yes. Because <laughs> this was done quite recently. Now, before I play that. You actually did quite a lot to promote this program within the city of Lauder Hill, right? right? Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, remember, my background is marketing, right? So I I, I completely understand that it's really about getting the, the word out. So when we first did Lauder Hill Shines, um, we ended up targeting only existing businesses, and the program was only four weeks. Okay. And you had to have been a business in Lauderdale for over a year. Um, and it was during COVID. 
So okay. at that time, we ended up having the signs all over. We did like a whole bunch of marketing and we accepted every person that applied. <laughs> Um, but, you know, after the first cohort, we we learned from that, expanded it to eight weeks for cohort two, which was Tashanya's cohort. And um, and then the momentum started to build. And, and this last cohort, I really did not do a lot of out of the box marketing other than, you know, reaching out to some of our PR contacts and, and using the city's channels. OK, perfect. Let, let everybody see you on uh, uh, N uh, NBC6 with George Strader. <laughs> well, this morning we're talking about women making boss moves in business, specifically here in South Florida. Building those businesses can be especially challenging for women in our community, but it doesn't have to be. Here now to talk more about this is the mayor of Lauderdale Lakes, Veronica Edwards Phillips and Lauder Hill Commissioner Melissa. Now, thank you both for joining me this morning. It's our pleasure. Thank yes. you so much. All right. I'm going to ask you guys some tough questions. <laughs> All right. We're ready. No, I'm not really. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, so let, let's talk a little bit more about what's happening there in Lauder Hill. Tell us a little bit more about some of the programs in place there to help small businesses survive and thrive. So in the city of Lauderdale, of Lauder Hill, we have over 10 programs that um, benefit small businesses. But one in particular is Lauder Hill Shines. Um, we are in the process of enrolling our seventh cohort. Over 80 businesses have gone through the program already, um, Jawan. A majority of them are women-owned businesses. A majority of them are minority-owned businesses. And over 12 weeks, we teach them everything from marketing to getting government contracts. It's a great opportunity for a small business to, to start in Lauder Hill as well as grow in the city. Are we talking about a particular... We're going to just move on from that. I could go on all day. So, Commissioner Dunn, we're going to take just a little bit of a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about the other programs. and Another major one, which needs a whole show of its, of its own, LHPP. So... Don't go too far, everybody. We'll be back in about 30, se uh, 30 seconds. At Shamsla Financial Services, we specialize in credit services and insurance services. As a financial social worker, I'm here to help you maximize your credit score with thinking outside of the box. Located in the city of Lauder Hill, Mercy's Healthcare Registry has been serving the AIDS community for over 15 years. As a staffing agency, we hire HHAs, CNAs, LPNs, and RNs. Give us a call today, 954-572-3699. Advertise for free on Lauder Hill TV while the offer lasts. Call 954-279-3893 for the details. Yes, definitely. I want to encourage you guys to get in touch with me if you'd like to put a 15 second uh, video ad up here on Lauder Hill TV. We're just in our pre launch phase. So we're offering a lot of stuff for free. And then once we launch, uh, pro probably in the new year, uh, that's when things will change a little bit. OK. <laughs> All right. So welcome again back to Lauder Hill TV. It's my pleasure to, to be here to uh, share great things, great people. And we're here, of course, with Commissioner Melissa P. Dunn, who has been doing amazing things in our city. Um, how long have you been in, in in office now, Commissioner? I'm in my first term. I got elected in November of 2020. So all of this stuff that you've done is just within the last three years. Is that mm -hmm. right? It really has. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? You know, Melissa, I was really intentional. And um, I, when I ran for this seat, I knew that I could do a good job. Mm. Um, I was not really certain about the actual campaigning part of it, if mm -hmm. I, you know, to be honest. Okay. But hey, Barbara, Barbara Herman is, is um, one of our HOA presidents. Good to yeah. see you. Um, so I, I really wasn't sure about the actual act of campaigning and fundraising and everything that goes into winning a campaign. Uh -huh. But I knew that I would do a good job and I knew that, um, you know, I was challenging an incumbent for his seat mm -hmm. and I knew that I would do a better job than, than what he was doing. Okay. And so when um, folks talked to me about running, I, I said, yes. And, and I trust God and I did the work. You absolutely did. So uh, congratulations on that. Loving this M and M interview. <laughs> You both speak so well. Oh, thank you so much, Paula. <laughs> Paula's like my, 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 my little cheerleader behind me. So thank you so much for that. All right. It's not too late, guys, to tell a friend. Let, let, let them come in and learn all about uh, LHPP, which is the next uh, massive. This, this one is huge that we're going to talk about. Um, Commissioner, 
What is LHPP? What does it stand for? And, and what is it all about? It's called the Lauder Hill Health and Prosperity Partnership. I'm going to share a story with you. Um, I don't know if I've ever said publicly before, but um, I used to be in 2012, 20, 2013, I used to be the marketing director for Florida Medical Center. And at the time, Gabrielle Finley Hazel was a CEO. I mean, a really amazing, powerful woman, under 40, doing her thing, running a hospital. And I remember when I was kind of, you know, doing the work, thinking to myself that I wish we had something like what they have in New York, where community is working together to address some of the needs, not just in healthcare, but also in economics and, 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 and all of the things that we know make up the health of a community. Mm -hmm. So the seed for LHPP was actually in my heart, was planted oh. all the way in 2013. And, you know, it's funny how things work, right? I left FMC, got put on the board of the chamber, spent a lot of time working through the chamber, and, and, and then, you know, decided to run. So um, one of the first things that I wanted to do was um, start the partnership. I knew it from day oh. one that that's what I was going to do. Wow. You know, and, and, and the more that I looked into this program, I realized that this is, 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 is so genius, really, when you think about it, because it covers every single part of of, of life. So I'll, let, I'll mm -hmm. let you sort of walk us through what it actually entails. Sure. So there are three core truths that LHPP is founded on. The first core truth is that government cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. In order for us to create the type of community that we all envision, one where people feel safe, one where children are going to great schools, where we all have access to livable wage jobs, where um, you know we have a uh, neighbors are kind and loving to each other, all of that requires all hands on deck, mm -hmm. and so that's the first core principle of this program, which is we must collaborate in order to move the city forward. Um, the second core truth about this program is that the health of a community is more than just going to the doctor. In fact, that only makes up 40%. There's this thing called the social determinants of health where according to the CDC and the World Health Organization, there are six, excuse me, there are five things that really make up the health of a community. There they are right there. So it's the neighborhood and built environment. That's how you know, do you have live? Do you have um, you know good quality air? How is the environment? Um, do you have parks for kids to play in? The second one is education quality. So, how are the schools? Are the children having the resources they need in order to thrive in that learning environment? Then you have community context. Now, social and community context is really all about how connected we feel. Um, and really some things like safety and um, access to healthy foods. Then economic mobility. That's a huge one for us in Lauder Hill because when you look at what our median um, income is in the city, it's not as high as some of our neighbors, right? And so economic mobility is, is critical. Um, you know, I was meeting with um, some previously incarcerated men the other day, and they were telling me that part of the reason why they decided to make decisions about selling drugs or robbing people when they were teenagers was simply because of economic reasons. They wanted the sneakers. Their parents couldn't afford to give it to them. And so they went out and committed crimes to get it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we took that off the table and created opportunities for people to have access to livable wage jobs, create opportunities for entrepreneurs to start and scale businesses, then we can create economic mobility for folks. And then the other piece is access to quality health care. Do we have access to great medical providers that are um, culturally competent, that are in linguistically competent, that are providing um, you know, great access and great service? 
And so th that's really what, what we do in um, LHPP. We address that. So when did you start this and and what you went through a series of steps it's been it's been a couple of years and you've went through a series of um you know development and, and all of that so could you could you walk us through that a little bit yeah and before I, I walk you through i want people to understand what my background is right okay. i have an mba in healthcare and i have a, a green uh, a green belt in lean six sigma so looking at process improvements oh. so that's my background in addition to my training in, in marketing and communications gotcha. i used to be the director of of health systems and community health initiatives for the american cancer society's manhattan office so this is what i do this is my job <laughs> turning around <laughs> turning around community um is 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 my passion right that's what i do and i do it very well yes um so the first step is to do a community. Well, well, the first step really was for me to share the idea with our city manager mm -hmm. to get her buy in. Because remember, as I said, we can't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I spoke to the city manager with her, shared the vision, shared the process. She loved it. And she not only said, let's do it. She said, I will um, I will um, allow my staff to be an intricate part of, of the movement. Mm. Because if you think about it, the staff of the city does not report to me. The only people that report to the commission is a city attorney, the city manager, and the city clerk. Everybody else reports to the city manager. The city manager really acts as a chief operating officer for the city. Okay. And the commission basically acts as the board of directors, if you will. Okay. Okay. So in order for me to really make it work, the city manager had to be willing to commit her staff resources to do it. Wow. And so that's why I always say LHPP was co-founded by city manager Desiree Guile Smith and myself because she could have said no. Right, right. You always do say that. That's 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 Correct. amazing. So right. we we create we I put together a um once the city manager said yes, I reached out to two colleagues that I knew from the, the research world and the public health world, um, Dr. Um, Hafazula, who it was um, a big, like a huge um, member of the Nova Medical School dean, faculty, I mean, plus an amazing physician, an amazing researcher, spoke to her about the vision, asked her to come on board. She said, yes, she would be a volunteer. Then I spoke to Dr. Keisha Gray from um, um, Children's Services Council of Broward County. She said, yes. And then I had another good friend of mine who worked for um, Simply Healthcare and asked her to come on board. She said, yes. So basically the starting foundation was me and these four women working through it we put together a research project, did a community needs assessment in a matter of months. Mm. And that's with us doing the heavy lifting. A, a document like that, when I do something like that for a client, I charge over $100,000. Wow. And I did this with the help of these amazing women, amazing volunteers. We did it. I think I might have spent like maybe $2,000 out of my budget to have somebody edit it. Wow. So guys, and again, you can see this document, the needs assessment, it's right there on the um, the Lord Hill website again under Commissioner Dunn's name under Health and uh, uh, Lord Hill Health and Prosperity Partnership. And this is the this is the whole document. What is it, 70 odd pages? 70 odd pages, <laughs> yes. And you know what? Actually, I want to back up a little bit. Sure. I skipped a step. So I spoke to the city manager about the idea. She came on board. And I spoke to our partners, the women that I recruited, and they came on board. And then after that, I went to my colleagues. I um, proposed a resolution to the city commission to establish LHPP, and it passed unanimously. Um, and then I went back again and asked my colleagues, well, would they want to be a part of it, to sit on one of the sub councils? Mm -hmm. And um, initially, all but one agreed. Um, and so we've moved forward. Okay. So like you were saying, so the, the, the needs assessment was done. Um, what, what, 
let me ask you this because I feel like I might have been at one of these meetings where you were like, you were in you were in one of the focus groups you were in the yes. business focus group mm -hmm, you were <laughs> yeah so with the community needs assessment we did a whole bunch of focus groups we did surveys um, we did data analysis um, our friends at the South Florida um, health regional health planning council um, they were tremendous. They actually did the data, looking at CDC places data, and they pulled together a lot of the um, the health outcomes data that you see in the plan was pulled together. And, and they did that for us pro bono just because I asked. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was amazing because you did get, you did have, the, you did allow the community community to get involved so when you put that out I didn't know what it was I didn't know what LHPP was but I was like if it's to do with the community and we have a voice we have a say why not show up and and see if I can contribute in in any way so we were brainstorming about something or we were making notes on big boards uh -huh. and doing all sorts yeah, of things yeah, so, yeah. so that's what it was back then so that's amazing to, to sort of see the development yes. so then after the after the needs assessment what was done after that then so after we did the need assessment, then we took the data. And, and by this time, we had um, created sub-councils, right? So there's a sub-council for each of the social determinants of health. And in addition to a, a communication sub-council and a research sub-council. So after that, we took the data, we presented it to the commission, we presented it to the sub-council. And then I said to the sub-council, okay, now look at the data and identify your top four priorities. Okay. And once they identify the top four priorities, I walk them through a process known as developing a logic model. And the logic model, not to geek out on the, on the social <laughs> science of it all, <laughs> but the logic model basically says you have a goal, uh -huh. you have to think about what what you need to put in, what you need to do in order to, and what you need to put in, the resources that you need in order for you to get a goal achieved, right? So um, before even the investment deck, we oh, okay. but we developed a, um, after the logic model, we developed a community action plan and that document is there as well. Okay. So the community action plan, you'll see what the priorities are of each of the sub councils. So, for example, for um, for the healthcare access, they are looking at mental health. They're looking at um, they're looking at Im um, implementing a community paramedics and program, um, and and so that document there really is 100% community driven, mm -hmm. done in collaboration with the founding members of the sub-council, taking the data into consideration, taking the focus groups into consideration, and then um, deciding on this is what we want to accomplish. A lot of work has been done, um, Commissioner. It's it's thorough. It's, um, it's amazing. And half the time, most of this, not most, some of the city people don't know what's happening in their city because they're not getting involved in some of these things. And you can have a say, you can, you can be involved in so many different ways. Um, talk about how people can actually um, get involved. Are, are we at that point? Have you talked about, have you talked about all the different steps as far as the planning? Yeah, all? yeah, yeah. Well, we've talked about the steps. Well, I actually do want to mention another, another step, right? Uh -huh. So up until that point, Melissa, we were bootstrapping it. No okay. money. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the investment then. <laughs> Let me go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Zero money. You know, just me kind of using some of my city budget, you know, a little bit of, you know, to, to offset some of the costs. Zero money. Um, but the commitment from the city manager to put her staff on this thing. Commitment from residents, volunteers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have an epidemiologist that's working on this. We have like researchers that's, you know, that's what they do. We have people in the city of Lauderhill that, um, you know, are nurses that's on this thing. And so, um, you know, after we had the plan, then the next thing was for us to try and find the money. Okay. Because there's only so much you can do with volunteer labor. Yes. Right. We have a plan. Now we need to put the plan into action. And quite frankly, I was doing a lot of the, the work with my aide, my aide at the time, Ebony, 
um, we were doing a lot of the heavy lifting and it, you know, it was a, a labor of love, mm -hmm. but it was unsustainable. Oh, okay. So I knew in order to make it work, we needed to have investors who will invest in the capacity. So I reached out to a good friend of mine at the um, community found uh, the health foundation of South Florida, whom I knew in my, my private business, um, because they were my client at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I knew that there was synergy. So I reached out to them to see if they would be interested in investing in Lauder Hill. And we started the, the process of talking and seeing how they would fit. And so they were early investors in this work. They invested over 300 and I think 90 something thousand dollars, maybe $350,000. And even before then, um, you know, we found out, I found out about a grant directly from the vice president because I was on that call when she made the announcement wow. and um, for a COVID grant. So we applied for that. And because of the foundation that we had in LHPP, because of the community needs assessment that we did, the city got a grant for $3.8 million to do health equity work around COVID. But the grant was very specific and none of that money could go towards building the infrastructure for LHPP. So um, I was really grateful when Health Foundation said yes, they gave us the, you know, 300 and something thousand dollars. So with that money, we were able to hire Naya Washington as a program manager. Mm -hmm. um, but we still needed other investors. All right. Before, so, uh, before you say anything further, you said that number kind of kind of quickly, that, that big, big number. You said that kind of quickly. How much was that number? How much did you get in grant? For? Um, well, totally, I brought in $4.6 million in the city. $4.6 million for totally. the Total. Totally, totally. I, I've been responsible for bringing four point six million, and, um, and I think it's not—it's not a small thing to just sort of jump over that number. I mean, I don't know if you—if you—if you're able to do this or not, but as far as uh, bringing funds into the city, um, commissioners or the mayor or whatever, is this a—is this a big number or is this a small number or average in comparison to what other people are doing? I've, I've no idea. I don't think I well, I think traditionally, traditionally, the way that people play this game is that, um, you know, elected officials are a part of lobbying for resources from the federal government and from Tallahassee. We traditionally do that. Um, and 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 the four point six million dollars that I'm talking about has nothing to do with the money that that I've went to Tallahassee or to Washington D.C. to ask for. I'm not counting that. That's all separate. That's that's a part of our, in my opinion, that's a part of our responsibility. Right. right? Well, is this is go, specific for LHPP. Is that right? Well, correct. Because I am at heart a public health person. With a nonprofit background, I understand that in order for you to do the kind of things that I envision getting done, yeah. can't rely only on taxpayer dollars. And quite frankly, I, I I had to I have to have a proof of concept. And there's no way that you know my colleagues would be willing to fund LHPP. In fact, one time I asked, and they said no. One person said, "Well, go find the money yourself." And so I did. <laughs> so you did. <laughs> Oh, my word. Barbara says, amazing. <laughs> wow. I mean, I got to say big congratulations on that. And this is uh, this is one of the reasons why I was really excited about bringing you on the show, just to let people know what is going on at this level. Because the other thing that I want to try to achieve with Lauder Hill TV is to just have these conversations on a, you know, we're digging deep. Or we're just having a conversation, but we're talking about things that, that people are doing that you may not sit through a four hour commission meeting to hear, but mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're hearing it at, at these type of things. Um, uh, creative funding says, uh, says Paula. Yeah. Um, oh, do you know what? I want to say this. I want to give credit again. You know, I did not write the grant. I want to make that clear. The city manager's staff wrote the grant. Okay. With my guidance. Right. Right. With us collaborating together. I don't want to give the impression that I was a grant writer, even though I can. And in my yeah. career, I have written multi-million dollar grants. Except, I know how to do it. Right. 
Sure, but it's like you say, it's a team effort. It's, it's a, a it's, team effort. It's um, it's it's one lot of hell. It's everybody working together, right? Right. Um, creative funding says Paula. Uh, Barbara says she gets things done. <laughs> I do, Barbara. Thank things. you for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. No, I'm 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 truly I'm truly uh, inspired and impressed. So, um, all right. So, what else can we say about the LHPP? So, yeah, I, I just want to mention two more of our early investors. So, um, Health Foundation of South Florida gave us three hundred and something thousand dollars to build the infrastructure. And then um, A.D. Henderson Foundation, which is a foundation out of Vermont. Mm, It turns out that one of our um, LHPP members is um, on their board of directors. So when he went to his board meeting in Vermont, he told them about the work that we were doing in Lauderhill. And they reached out to us and asked us to put a proposal together. And so we created a neighborhood um, health and prosperity hub that we're focusing on Devon Hut and Lauderhill Point. Um, and they invested two hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and um, that project is on the way. We're in the the early phases of that project, um, and then um, the Community Foundation of um, Broward is also an, an early investor, and they gave us um, also over three hundred and something thousand dollars as well. So we now have, I think, the infrastructure. So we have. Um, we have a um, the program manager, which is Naya Washington. We now have a um, a community uh, hub manager or coordinator. She's going to be working on the neighborhood hubs and also community outreach. Um, Fatima, so she's she's on on the team, mm-hmm. and um, and so now the next round of funding I'm looking for. <laughs> Is the money to actually do the work? Oh, and we've gotten investments from the National League of Cities. They've given us um, fifteen thousand dollars to do um, this current project that we're doing now, um, where we're looking at the procurement system in the city. Um, and they gave us one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the Lauder Hill Youth Excel program to introduce youth to STEM careers. So we've been really lucky that we've gotten some good early investors. You really, really have. You really, really have. Um, now, I know for sure you've done quite a lot of different programs and things under the umbrella of LHPP, mm-hmm. um, and you have some things coming up. So let's first um, look at some of the things that you've done, and then we'll look at some of the things that's coming up. So uh, you want to start with t- talking, telling us a little bit about the uh, gun uh the safety oh, yeah the peace movement the you peace guys movement. can i tell you that it breaks my heart every time i get a text about something violent that happens in our city it hurts my heart and i pray about it and i'm like what can we do how can we how can i be a part of the solution And I have come to the conclusion that there are several ways that we get to make this community safer. Certainly from a law enforcement perspective, we need to make sure that our police department, our men and women in uniform have all of the tools that they need in order to do the job. And we've done that. We have shot spotters, which is a technology that helps them to identify gunshot when it happens in the city. I went to Tallahassee, Commissioner Jabo and I both went to Tallahassee to lobby for those dollars, and we brought it back to the city. Um, for the first time, the Lauder Hill Police Department is fully staffed. That has never happened before. Wow. So my colleagues and I are giving our law enforcement the tools and the support they need to get the job done. So that's one part of the equation. The other part of the equation is really the community. The community needs to come forward and share information when it happens, right? So that's the second part of the equation. And then the third part is our individual responsibility. We think sometimes that crime happens to other people out there, that it happens on that side of the Lauder Hill. I can tell you, I see the statistics that happens all over, not just in Lauder Hill, but all over the world. And so this Lauder Hill peace movement kicked off with the um, the Lauder Hill Walk for Peace that we did in honor of Gun Violence Awareness Month in June. Yes. Listen, I was so amazed 
and how many people showed up, Melissa? Yeah, we'll just carry on. I'm going to I'll just yeah. turn that down. <laughs> All of the people who showed up marching for peace, really um, committed to this idea that peace is our individual responsibility. And we had them take a pledge. Um, and the pledge basically says that we are going to be responsible for how we show up in the room. What we do the next time somebody cuts us off in traffic, how we respond, how we respond to our friends and our families, and, and the way that we speak to each other, the way that we, we, we um, manage conflict at home, um, on the road, um, in our jobs. And when you think about a lot of the crime that happens here, it's a lot of it is domestic related. And so my vision, Melissa, is for us to create a lot of hill where everybody understands their own personal responsibility to make this city the best place to live, learn, work, play, do business and raise a family. And so that means the way that I speak to people matters. Mm -hmm. The way that I respond to my neighbor matters. And so this um, Peace Walk is now transitioning into Lauder Hill Peace 365. Oh. And this Lauder Hill Peace 365 movement, um, the women in my leading lady circle is taking the lead in collaboration with the Social and Community Context Subcouncil from LHPP. Okay, and I also know that you're having discussions. So I went to a sort of a follow up to your um, to one of like it, was it a follow up to the symposium or something like that. And there was the police there. There was um, the, the the guy oh, who was yeah. uh, incarcerated. The breaking bread. Breaking, yes. Oh, that was breaking, yeah, breaking bread. Yes. Breaking bread. And so that conversation is um, something that is coming out of the social and community context subcouncil. That's a that's a, the subcouncil I was telling you that their job is to focus on creating community cohesion okay. and making sure that residents feel safe and connected. So one way that they're doing that is by creating breaking bread, which is having a space for people who don't normally talk to each other True. to come together and break bread and have a conversation. Yeah. So the last one was so powerful. You were yes. there yes. and it was between the police department and men who were previously incarcerated. That's One of it. the gentlemen had been in jail for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that was such a powerful conversation because I don't think that um, it, it even, rec even recognized, well, you know what? Police people are people. Mm -hmm. See, how can we see beyond the uniform? And I, and I think for the police, it was really important for them to see that, you know, these men are also men. And we've got to have mutual respect. Yes. What was really good about that was that, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, you know, previously incarcerated uh, gentleman there was able to just share what would make it easier, you know, for people like him to get back into society. And then the police also gave tips on how the, you know, they can interact together. So it was, it was really, really, it, you're right. It was really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah. So that yes. was one of the program. And I forgot about that. You're right. There's another <laughs> one. There's another one coming up in, in June. With the, with the know, youth? With the youth. Yes. That's the youth right. and the police. But you know what? The thing about this program, why I love it so much, Melissa, is um, not only are we breaking ground in, in Lauder Hill, we're, we're doing some things here that I don't think has been done this way uh, by many communities, um, certainly not many communities of our size. But what I love about this is that there's a role here for everybody. You yes. know, I, I always say to people, you're either going to be a part of the problem or somebody sitting on the sidelines complaining about the problem, or you're going to become part of the solution. And for those residents and business owners and faith leaders and nonprofits who want to be a part of the solution, we have a seat for you at the table. Pull up. Pull up to LHPP. There's room for you, and and that's what's so incredible about incredible about it is because people can feel like there's a space there and and, and, a, and a practical way to get involved. 
not just going to a meeting and sitting down and then walking out and then cr grumbling. But there's a you be a, you, you can be a part of the program to brainstorm, to give your ideas, and to help things move forward. So I I just think it's incredible. When I when I really took a look at it, I was blown away. Mm. Well, right. you know, it's it, it's a great opportunity. I have to say that we're you know like any startup business that. You know, when you're on a startup board of a nonprofit, you're doing more than just giving your advice, right? You're actually <laughs> doing the work too. Right. So, you know, my hat goes off to this startup group, the founding members yeah. of LHBP, because, you know, and you're now one of the founding members, right? Because until oh, okay. we get, until we are at the space where we're fully funded and we have, a, you know, somebody that's really poured some real money into it and we are fully staffed and, and all of that girl, listen, I'm going to need you to help out with social media. I'm going to yeah. need you to help out with covering events. And, 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 you know, whereas if it were a fully funded program, then you would come to a meeting once a month and, mm -hmm. and give feedback. Yes. Mm -hmm. We want you to go in that direction. No, we want you to go in that direction and then staff do the work. Well, um, we just got staff and it's still not a lot of people. Right. And so our founding um, partners, our founding um, partners really are really hands on. Yes. And each of the each of the different departments or the, the co co what's it called? The, the sub sub council, sub council, sub council. Mm -hmm. We're brainstorming with ideas and we, we had a, we had a meeting last night and we, we're coming up with some plans for to develop for the next year. So I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, I'm able to just give my uh my contribution in in what i what i do what i do best so that's it I, and and what's what's uh what's funny about that is um i initially start, came in to be a part of the uh the fitness uh fitness and and and, and recreation yeah, yeah. <laughs> and once i realized there was there was actually a communications chair i i, I switched over now melissa i got uh, sorry commissioner i it's already after nine we still have a lot to talk about are you able to stay another 20 minutes or so, or do you I, have to go? I am, but if you need to go on a break, you can, because okay. I need to find my my plug for my computer. Sure. My battery gonna, light just came on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's take a short break, everybody. We're still uh, just, you know, three three thirds of the way through. So, uh, so three fourths. So don't go anyway, guys. Let's come. We're going to come right back. Advertise for free on Lauder Hill TV while the offer lasts. Call 954-279-3893 for the details. At Shamsla Financial Services, we specialize in credit services and insurance services. As a financial social worker, I'm here to help you maximize your credit score with thinking outside of the box. Located in the city of Lauder Hill, Mercy's Healthcare Registry has been serving the AIDS community for over 15 years. As a staffing agency, we hire HHAs, CNAs, LPNs, and RNs. Give us a call today, 954-572-3699. Welcome back to Lord of Hill TV, everybody. It's an exciting, exciting show today. Um, welcome to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome, James. Nice to have you today. Hello, friend. And uh, Maddie says, yes, special invitation extended to the community to have a seat at LHP table. She's also a part of what, what? What council is she a part of? Somebody was asking me this today. Listen, <laughs> I don't, what is Maddie not Maddie, involved I know. In? Which one are you? Which one she are you is, part of, Maddie? So, so <laughs> she is. She is a co-chair for a separate movement called Lauda Hill Proud, and honestly, what you do at Lauda Hill TV is part of the mission for Lauda Hill Proud, which is for us to tell our own stories and talk about the things that we love about this community. I am sick and tired <laughs> of hearing negative news about Lauda Hill. We're done. I'm done We're with done. that. We're done with I'm that. done with that. So um, she is a Lauda Hill Proud Ambassador. And as a Lauda Hill Proud Ambassador, she is leading a movement 
um, that's completely resident driven, where we are promoting the best of our community. That includes the great things to do here. And of course, promoting our local businesses because we want people to shop local for every single cent that you you put in the, um, you, every dollar that you put here gets circulated back. People get jobs. People are able to work on our infrastructure. And so I, yeah, so that's part of what, what we do through Lauder Hill Proud. Perfect, perfect. And she's gonna, she's right, she's in the background right now, actually. So waiting to come up to do the um, interpretation. So, um, all right. So let's completely uh, finish our talk about the LHPP. And you do have some events coming up under that umbrella. So, yes. did you want to say anything before I, I bring up? Those I, events? I do actually, and and this is a really important initiative. So. You know, part of the outcome that we are creating with LHPP is to create policies, systems, and environmental changes that really move the needle. Mm -hmm. It's not just about having events. Events don't create sustainable change. <laughs> it's not about just having a program. Programs are nice. Programs are important, but that does not create sustainable change. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to have policy change. Two policies came out of economic mobility, right? One policy is a target market program, which basically says that if a Lauder Hill business, um, well, that if the city of Lauder Hill has a contract valued at $100,000 or less in certain categories, like advertising, like janitorial, like printing, like um, plumbing, mm -hmm. um, like lawn care, that that contract must go to a lot of hill business if there are three or more businesses there to compete for that contract. Okay. That's a, a economic mobility policy. Fantastic. Another economic mobility policy is SBE program, which is a small business um, enterprise program mirroring that of the county. So if you're certified with, with Broward County, you can apply for your certification in the city of Lauder Hill and it's reciprocated. Um, so... With a $15,000 investment from National League of Cities, Naya and I have been working with Harvard University to look at the city's procurement process, which is our government contracting process, our purchasing process. We've done surveys, we've done focus groups, and we have um, looked at some of the barriers to local businesses accessing contracts with the city and we have developed a series of recommendations and shifts in our policy to um, remove some of those barriers. So next week, the 13th of September, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we are hosting our first South Florida, um, sorry, our first small business boot camp, our small business procurement boot camp. So if you are a small business in the city of Lauder Hill or the surrounding community, scan that QR code, register, and come. We're doing this with, with Health Foundation, with the South Florida Anchor Alliance. By the way, the South Florida Anchor Alliance is another resolution that I put forward that gave us, I think we were the first city in Broward County to join the Anchor Alliance that now gives our members access to over $2 billion worth of procurement, okay? So at this event, we will teach you about government contracting. You will learn from directly from a procurement officer that's going to tell you this is what a winning bid should look like. Wow. And our city uh, deputy city manager, who is also the city's finance director, he is going to release publicly for the first time, the purchasing projection for the city of Lauder Hill. So you will know over the next fiscal year, these are the things the city is looking to purchase. And you won't know that first if you're not in the room. <laughs> so register. Again, register. Go to the city website, which is there. Go to Commissioner Dunn's page. It's actually on the homepage too. It's, actually it's on, on the, the homepage. homepage. And I can tell you a shortcut. Go to lauderhill-fl.gov backslash bootcamp. It'll take you straight to the page and register and show up. You guys, I can tell you. See, this is.
why people in Lauder Hill Shines, the ones that, that have used the program to their benefit, you want to know why they're successful. You want to know why people like the owners of Bright Star Properties can say that because they graduated from the program, they have gotten access to over a million dollars worth of contracts. You know why they can say that? Because when I tell them to show up, what do they do? <laughs> they show they up. They show up. I am registered. I use as a better concept PR. <laughs> yes, I'm registered. I'm registered. I'm going to be there. And a friend of mine called me last night. I was like, what is this all about? I'm like, yeah, you need to be there. You need to register. <laughs> um, oh, this- and just so that you know, it's not just the city of Lauder Hill that's going to be there. We're going to have Miami-Dade County. We're going to have Broward County. We're going to have the Broward County School Board and the Miami-Dade County School Board. And so one of the officers at the Broward County School Board is somebody that um, I go way back with from my days at the chamber. Mm -hmm. And she prepared to also talk about some of the purchasing needs of the school board. Okay, excellent. My friend James is saying, I live in Delaware. Can I show up? Yes, James, get on a plane. Come (laughs) down here. Come on down, James. You always come on to down. down. <laughs> <So>, Miss <laughs> Fantasy Folly is here. Good evening, ladies. Good uh, greetings to the room as well. All right, we have other events that's coming up. Let's uh, let's show people um, the Lord of Hill Stems. This falls under the LHPP as well. It Talk does. About it does. It does. And this program, you know, Scott Newton, who is the park superintendent, he says that this is one of his favorite programs, and I have oh. to say, it is mine as well. You know, Scott is, um, you know, when the grant came through and I was like, listen, we need to go for it. He and I worked with a consultant to get this grant written. $150,000 investment from National League of Cities allowed us to start the program. We had one group of students to go through already. And this is in now year two. And for year two, we're doing STEM Saturdays. So basically, you... And if you have a child between the age of eight and I think 18, Mm -hmm. you can take them to the Lauder Hill Historic Museum Mm -hmm. um, from from 12 to two o'clock. And we will have STEM activities for them to participate in. So they'll learn about not only um, different activities like, you know, woodwork or engineering or Um, aviation but um they'll also have fun yeah that's a good one i love that um we go to your ones first also this weekend what's what's happening this weekend yes this weekend and barbara herman was on earlier so this weekend we are having a the lauda hill health fair at enveron cultural center and you know, Enron is such good partners with the city. Typically, the cultural center is really close to yes. um, just people from that community. Right. And they have voted and decided that they're going to open their doors to every single Lauder Hill resident who wants to get access to health care. All right, Barbara, she's still here. She's here. <laughs> still here, watch it. <laughs> and so at this event, a lot of our LHPP partners will be there providing free health screenings. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, not only are they going to have health screenings, and, and I know you saw that people can register to vote there. And if you're looking to, um, if you still haven't sent in your mail-in ballots, um, registration oh. form, you can request that because we'll have people from the Supervisor of Elections okay. office there. Um, and we'll have, you know, um, the, the one piece is the Florida Department of Motor Vehicles is sending their mobile unit. Now, this is something that I've been trying to get done. And I want to give kudos to Senator Osgood's office because about a year and a half ago, one of the residents from Enveron said that, that she needed to have something like that because, Um, some of their residents are um, immobile. And so I have been trying to get them to come over a year and a half. And Senator Osgood's office made it happen. So we want to give credit where credit is due and thank her office. Thank Julie from her office for making that happen. But the event happens on the 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I have it on good authority that they have a whole bunch of prizes. So maybe Barbara can put in the chat 
what some of the prizes are for people who will be at the event. You've got to be there to win, y'all. You've got to be there to be rewarded. And of course, this is being done in partnership with Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. And my my colleague, um, Commissioner Jabo Lawrence Martin, who, by the way, is running for mayor as well. Okay. So um, I wanted to just show you um, what was commented here. Let's get the right screen. A better concept says, um, taking care of the youth. Look at that. Every month from, from September to May of 2024. That's what progress looks like. This is our Lord of Hill. Be there to take a seat at the table. So everybody, it's our... It's all of our duty, guys, to tell somebody about this program. Tell a parent who has some some young people who can uh, take advantage of this. And did we did we tell us how? Did you say how much it cost? It's free. Oh, it's, free. <laughs> <laughs> it's free, everybody. So it many of these free. programs are completely free. free. That mm -hmm. it really blows the mind when you think about it. LHPP is getting it done. LHPP is getting it done. Yes, says um, Barbara. Um, Demetria Rawls is here. Hey, Demetria. Good to have you. So, so, so happy to have you guys. Save the, save the link, save the Lord of Hill TV link. Each and every week, we've had some incredible guests, and you can go back and check them out. We had the mayor on, we had Jabba one, we're going to have the other commissioners on. We've had um, Florida Department of Transportation, we've had FEMA on. Next week, we have the number one etiquette queen on the show. Um, um, Jackie, Jackie Vernon. Vernon Thompson. Uh, the week after that, we're having Lord of Hill, Lord of Hill Performing Arts Center on. So we have some really, really great guests uh, lined up for you guys. So I want you all to tell somebody and tell them to come back here. We're doing a pre-launch right now, and then in the new year, we're going to be doing something big, guys. So look out for that. Look out for that. Especially after I've, I've already gone through the the, uh, the Lord of Hill the shine. Shines. They're going to be ready, I'm honey. We're so about to ready. Scale this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But I just right. want to point out that Barbara mentioned that for the health fair on Saturday, they're uh -huh. going to be giving away gift cards. Okay. Yes. Here we see that. Gift cards. As We always. know that'll help put some gas in the car, buy some groceries for the kids, you know, show up. All right. So we do have um, um, another thing in the LHPP um, program that is happening. Yes. Talk about this one. This one is so important. Um, you know, I have a mentorship program as well called Hibiscus Girls. Mm -hmm. And um, every year the girls have to do a community service project. And two years ago, my girls decided that they wanted to provide hygiene projects for the girls in middle school because they noticed that some of the girls didn't have their emergency kit so wow. when their menstruation would start and they would have an accident, it would be very embarrassing and uncomfortable. Oh, so the girls on their own wrote a grant without showing it to me, submitted it, got the grant. What? Yes, honey. Bought, I'm, these girls are so amazing. <laughs> Bought their stuff, invited. The only thing I did was I, I connected them to Dr. Hafizula for her to help them to get physicians from the medical school to come down and talk to the girls about hygiene. So anyways, they did that. And now the LHPP healthcare um, education sub council went and met with some of the schools and the schools were telling them that that was a need for the students to have access to hygiene projects because, you know, that's not something that the school board provides. Right. Right. So we are asking members of the community to go to a Lauder Hill Park. Um, you can drop the, the contents off at City Hall. You can drop them off at any of our parks, actually. And, um, you know, we're looking for, you know, sealed, unused hygiene products like feminine napkins, like toothbrush, toothpastes, um, hand sanitizer, um, deodorant, things like that, that would be really helpful to the young people. Um, and I know everybody, you know, may have an extra five or ten dollars. Go to the dollar store, pick some stuff up and drop it off. Mm. Really, really important and uh, worthwhile programs you're, you're implementing here. 
um, Commissioner. And that's um, I, an initiative being driven by the Education Subcouncil. That's wonderful. So again, another LHPP uh, Subcouncil is is, uh, is is heading that one. I do want to read this one out, guys. To our, this is Madeline here. To our awesome guest, please subscribe to Lord Hill TV so we can continue bringing great guests like Commissioner Dunn on the show. Absolutely. The link is right there at the bottom. Um, uh, uh, YouTube.com slash at Lord Hill TV. We're going to put, we're going to drop the link in, in, in a little bit. Um, do we have any more? Let me see if I have any more events. I think that was the last one, but um, there was a couple of others that I, I'll bring those up later on. Okay. And while you, while you bring them up, I, I really just want to, um, to encourage your viewers to get involved. You know, it's not enough to vicariously go through life sitting on the sidelines. You can't. You, the, you, we all have a responsibility to do more than take up space, right? <laughs> and so um, I don't mean that to sound cruel or mean, but I mean it to, because that's the way that I feel. We all have a responsibility to contribute to our community. Um, and if you don't necessarily want to join LHPP, at least make a commitment to show up differently, to be kind to your neighbors, um, and to at least stay informed and engaged. You know, there are three things that you can do to support the community. Really easy. I don't care how busy you are. You can do these three things. Number one, stop local. So when you buy supermarket, don't go to Tamarack, don't go to, to Plantation, don't go to Sunrise. Find a local grocery store to go to, okay? For women, we all like to do our nails and our mm. hair. Find a place in Lauderhill. And there's so many, And right? there's so many. And then gas. When you buy gas in any city that you buy gas in, 3% of the gas tax that you pay at the pump goes to that city. And that oh. money is used to support the infrastructure, like the roads, etc. So when you live in Lauderhill and you go up the street and buy your gas in Tamarack, you're funding Tamarack. Okay. I mean, you know, no shade. I'm, I'm certainly not sh not showing shade. I'm just trying to help you to understand. But when you put it like that, it makes so much more sense. Correct. You know? Correct. Because you're paying the gas tax anyways. Why not have it go to improving our own infrastructure? So if you're looking, if you're not a joiner and you're looking for three easy, concrete things to do and to do to help our community you know, shop local, you know, get your groceries, your gas and your hair and nails done in Lauder Hill. Okay. And um, if you want to be more involved and more engaged, then I invite you to join LHPP. There's room there. If you are a nurse, there's a committee for that. If you are a carpenter <laughs> or a gardener, there's a committee for that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be on the sidelines. Um, and then the final thing that I want to say, and, you know, I want to take this last few minutes to say this, Melissa, because I am, I am so much keeping our community in prayer. For the first time ever in the 55, 56 year history of our city, every single seat on the city commission is up on the ballot in 2024. Mm. So if you're not registered to vote, register to vote. If you normally get a mail-in ballot and you are expecting that ballot to come to you in the mail the way it normally does without you having to take action, let me tell you, Tallahassee has changed the rules under wow. our governor. That will no longer happen. If you want to vote by mailing ballot, you need to go to the supervisor of election, the Broward supervisor of election. I think it's BrowardVotes.org. I, I don't remember, but mm -hmm. Google Broward supervisor of election. And, um, and you need to request your mail in ballot. This is very, 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 very important. The commission 
we set the policies for the city and we set the budget for the city, right? And in order for us to get anything done, we need at least three votes. Mm -hmm. So the wrong people in those seats can undo all of the programs that we've been talking about. I am on the ballot oh. for re-election in 2024. So far, I do not have a competitor, but I am I'm campaigning like my life depends on it because our city's life depends on it. So please, mm -hmm. residents, do not sit on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Register, get to know the candidates, and participate. Thank you for that, uh, Commission. I mean, I'm going to have to have you on the show again because we haven't finished what we're, we're here to talk about. Um, I, I, I've just dropped in the Commissioner's page one more time. I don't want to keep you much more than much more than this, but the, look, look on the, her page again and look at all the different sections of the uh, on the right left hand side here. So there's so many things that she does. Go through them and and get involved. Commissioner, I do want to ask you just one more thing, since, since I don't want to keep you too too long. Um, what can you name one restaurant or favorite place that you love in the city of Lauder Hill? Oh, <laughs> just one, just one, just one, just one. What are well, you? I, there are a few. <laughs> um, I love Island Sips. Um, okay. I, I like to go to the one. I mean, the one in the hotel is good too, but I like to go to the one on Oakland by Ocean, by um, by um, Sports Park. I love uh -huh. their 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 green smoothie. Okay. Um, and I also love the curry shrimp at People's Choice Restaurant on Thirty First Avenue. So those are, are my two go-to places. And then for jerk chicken, I like to go to jerk machine. Uh, well, I don't, well, I don't really eat chicken anymore, but when I used to eat a lot of jerk chicken and I bought jerk chicken in Lauder Hill, I would go to um, jerk machine. Catherine Ma Malcolm has been in business in our city for over 30 something years at the Lauder Hill mall. Yes. And I'm going to have all of those people on the show. And the first two you mentioned, just happened to have gone through Lord Hill Shines too, right? They have. <laughs> <laughs> they have. Oh. What can I say? I'm loyal. I know. I love that. All right, Commissioner, we're going to have you again before before the year is up because we still have so much to talk about. I really appreciate your time. Sorry to keep you over so long. I didn't really think it was going to go this long. But uh, if you're open to it, would you come back again? I would absolutely love to. And to be honest with you, um, I would like to do a, a regular spot for LHPP. Uh, yeah, each, that'd each, be great. Uh, you know, five or ten minutes just to give a quick update on what's happening. So let's let, that's part of the communications plan as well. Fantastic. And our our co chairs, I think, would love the opportunity. Our sub council chairs would have, love the opportunity to share what their their people are up to. Perfect, Commissioner. Keep on doing an incredible job. You made such a difference in, in in the community. Again, there was just there was one thing that particularly I was really interested in when I saw that you'd raised. Um, 3.8 million, but it's actually 4 point something million. That's a big deal for the city. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, you're doing a fantastic job. All of these things that you're doing, it really does help the, the city of Lauder Hill. I bid you a wonderful night. Thank you. And thank you for spreading good news about our city. We need it, Melissa. Well done. Um, thank you so much. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Oh, I'm so sorry, Madeline, to keep you so long. How are you doing, my dear? <laughs> oh, I, I took you off and then you put yourself okay. back on. <laughs> All right, you're looking lovely. Thank you. Well, you always look lovely, so to compliment you. <laughs> uh, how are you? I am well, thank you. How's it going? Awesome show today. Well, as I usual. I tell you, that's a that's a ni 90 minutes. It just went like that. Um, Barbara says humble. Uh, welcome, Jessica. With uh, now, I'm craving curry, right? I'm I'm craving I'm craving um, what they call doubles right now, curry doubles. All right. So before and without any further ado, Madeline, are you able to um give us a wrap up in Creole? I sure am. 
Bonsoir à tous fanatiques New York. Nous connaissons chaque jeudi à 8h. C'est l'Ode Hill TV qui entre la caillou. Ou gagne Melissa Jen qui est toujours là. Et moi-même qui la Madeleine Well, l'Ode Hill Creole TV Translator. L'Ode Hill Proud Ambassador qui la pour capable informer ou tout ça qui ou besoin qu'on ou ta remé qu'on ou envie qu'on ou pas qu'on est de l'Ode Hill. Eh bien, c'est toujours un privilège, une opportunité pour nous capable de faire ça et traduire l'information en créole. Après-midi, nous avons gagné une commissionnaire Lode Hill qui c'est Melissa Pedon qui était ensemble avec nous, qui a partagé une série de programmes, activités qu'elle a toujours supporté, l'a lancé dans la ville de Lode Hill. Eh bien, l'important que vous participez et de diverses façons pour capable participer. Pas dire ou pas qu'on est rien, ou pas de business, ou bien, ou initi... Non, pas arrêter chita ou doué active dans tout ça qui a fait dans la ville, parce que ou connaît ou habite dans la ville, qui veut dire là, ça qui a passé dans la ville, il concerne ou, il concerne moi-même, il concerne Timon Nouyo, il concerne la société, c'est nous tous qui pouvons mettre main nous ensemble et puis pour nous capables de permettre l'activité, pour nous permettre la ville nous agrandir. Et puis après-midi, un programme était assez chargé, mais nous avons beaucoup quelques informations qui vraiment en mettait accent sur quelques programmes qui a fait durant la semaine en juillet qui a venu. Et pour plus d'informations, ou toujours capable d'aller dans l'Odehill bar fl.gov. Et puis vous chercher non Melissa Pedon pour apprendre tout un programme qui a fait dans la ville là et non seulement programme Melissa li là vraiment pour capable initier des policies policies qui vraiment a bénéficié nous toutes dans le dernier côté nous entendez à travers travail li entre 4.6 millions de dollars dans la ville là c'est parti c'est non en pile en pile en pile travail qui pour faire qui pour permettre les nous élire officiel nous yo pour nous assurer que yo a fait travail que nous élu pour yo fait pas seulement élu yo et puis sans que ou pas besoin qu'on ait ou bien pas chercher qu'on ait qui ça élu officiel nous yo a fait ou gagne une responsabilité depuis ou capable de voter voter et puis les ou élu yo faut que nous capable ouais qui travaille yo et bien, très rapide, nous passé sur quelques programmes qui a fait. Nous avons le 9 septembre, si Dieu veut, dans Environ Cultural Center, adresse lancée 3800 Environ Boulevard, côté Abguyon Fouad Santé. Li important pour capable participer, côté Wab Jouna Pile Ressources, si vous avez besoin de checker licence ou si vous avez besoin de checker tension ou si besoin d'informations pour santé ou pour connaître comment ça y est, eh bien, pas négliger en occasion ça, c'est le 9 septembre de 10 h pour arriver iner eh bien, commissionnaire Melissa a vraiment endossé le programme ça parce que faut vous checker, faut vous et pas seulement travail, travail, travail. Faut prendre soin de santé parce que sous pas santé ou pas capable de travail. Nous gagnons l'autre programme qui a fait dans la ville. C'est le 13. 13 septembre, si Dieu veut. Il y a un programme spectaculaire. Ou pas capable de rater le programme ça. Si vous êtes un business mineur, ou besoin qu'on ait comment pour capable de faire business avec gouvernement ou besoin qu'on ait comment pour jouer un contrat avec gouvernement ou qu'on ait comment pour faire un bon offre et puis pour y offre off là et bien joue ça ou pas caractère sous faire plomberie ou faire maintenance ou faire landscaping ou c'est charpentier et bien gouvernement gain besoin ou ou pas capable de rester chita et puis seulement ou reprendre ou, ou seulement ouais Madeleine qui vient du côté et puis prend business non élargir business là et bien le 13 septembre si Dieu veut programme ça lit à fait de 9h pour river 1h encore 3800 Northwest 11e place c'est dans la Hill Performing Arts Center ou pas capable de rater um, place ça lit dans coin Sunrise et puis 441 dans gros place gros, gros station ça et bien dès pour gagner business et puis vous voulez agrandir business ou commissionnaire Melissa Pedon lit en dos ces programme ça ou a bien direct finance là et ça plus belle là tout programme tout business que ville l'odeil il y a endossé comme si il besoin faire business ensemble avec eux ou 
au courant de yo pas perdre occasion ça le 13 septembre si Dieu veut pour capable venir faire partie de bootcamp ça et ou va apprendre comment pour faire business avec gouvernement programme nous gagne pour jeunes yo mes amis jeunes yo pas quitter jeunes yo rester sans yo pas faire rien ou combien qui activité ou comment nous vraiment penser pour tout le monde qui a vive dans l'Ode Hill encore commissionnaire Melissa Pedon li endossé ça qui relait l'Ode Hill Youth Excel STEM Saturdays ou travaille dans semaine là ou pas gain temps pour capable mener témoignage dans programme et bien les samedi commencer 16 septembre et pas samedi ça non L'autre samedi si Dieu veut ou capable mener Timounyo 1080 Northwest 47e avenue dans l'Ode Hill Historic Museum ou capable mener jeune depuis yo gagne 8 ans de 18 ans de midi pour 2 heures et bien yo capable apprendre des sciences technologie ingénieur mathématiques et non seulement ça Timounyo yo a amusé yo y a bien bon moment ensemble c'est en façon commissionnaire vraiment à travailler pour capable porter deux programmes pour nous-mêmes pour nous capable rester en santé en même temps tout nous gagne jeune yo qui met un programme en marche jeune yo qui veut dire là Timoun monde qui besoin produits hygiéniques les Timoun à l'école probablement les pas en mesure pour les capable acheter des produits hygiéniques eh bien jeune Simonio yo convoqué Melissa Pedon et puis yo dit nous besoin pour nous capable aider jeune Simon pareil nous comment on capable faire ça eh bien c'est pour raison ça jeune Simonio yo a lancé yo activité côté produits hygiéniques ou capable aller dans dans parc yo et puis déposer produits hygiéniques ou gon 5 dollars ou gon 10 dollars passer dans market là et puis pour capable acheter produits hygiéniques pour jeunes yo on m'a pas demandé comment ou capable aider ville là tout programme programme ça yo porté pour grâce à LHPP Lord Hill Health Prosperity Lord Hill Health Prosperity Partnership on m'a demandé qui ça ou capable faire dans ville là et bien faire partie de Lord Hill Health and Prosperity Partnership allez dans Lord Hill bar fl.gov ou capable mettre LHPP et puis pour capable connait comment programme ça encore li endossé par commissionnaire Melissa Pedon ensemble avec um, Villan donc un manager Villan qui endossé programme ça c'est une façon Lord Hill Health and Prosperity Partnership qui s'allie en bref c'est communauté qui mettez ensemble pour aider communauté en ou à demander qui sont capables de faire et bien rejoindre ensemble avec nous pour capable assurer communauté ou à vivre les agrandis et même gens ou bon plan l'on a plan ou à vos et puis pour être ça il a grandi il grandit il grandit jusqu'à ce que les bons fruits ou pas besoin de fruits en seulement une fois ou besoin toute année tout temps chaque jour pour manger et bien c'est même gens avec leur habité dans une zone une ville les essentiels gouvernement pas capable faire travail pour continuer même là élu gouvernement gouvernement pas capable faire travail pour continuer ça prend le point au même ça prend le point moi même ça prend le point nous toutes qui pour mettre nous ensemble et puis là nous mettre nous ensemble n'a pas capable combattre chômage n'a pas capable combattre crime n'a pas capable combattre monde qui pas paye n'a pas capable combattre monde qui pas éduqué les nous mettez nous ensemble et eh bien nous venons rendre ça travail ça un petit genre plus léger plus facile pour monde qui est élu pour yo capable rejoindre avec tout le monde li pral dépend de nous ou demander qui l'autre façon ou capable aider communauté ou acheter local Passer dans le supermarket qui est dans la ville de l'Odéhil et puis acheter dans la ville de l'Odéhil. Après, il dit que c'est celle de l'Odéhil. Acheter local dans la ville de l'Odéhil. Ce qu'on va faire encore. On va le faire chez Béo, on va le faire Zongo, on va le faire Babou. Faire tout le monde dans le Odéhil. Nous avons pile de choses en grande quantité dans le Odéhil. C'est une façon, l'on achète le Odéhil, l'agence a qui ou dépense le Odéhil, il retourne back dans la ville et puis pour le capable aider la communauté pour le capable en fonction. L'autre bagage qui est peut-être ou pas de connaître. Est-ce qu'on connaît l'eau fait gaz dans la ville de Hill 3% dans taxe que yo collecté hein li rete la pour de Hill ou pas connaître ça 3% dans taxe que yo collecté dans gaz li rete la dans ville de Hill c'est une façon pour infrastructure la rio yo capable ranger yo sidewalk yo pour nous assurer le conduit ou pas conduit tout 
fait gaz dans la ville, l'eau de l'île, pas le fait gaz n'importe côté. Si vous avez gaz ou pas, vous avez fait arriver côté pour aller, courir entre nous, gaz station dans l'eau de l'île, fait gaz, et puis, vous avez l'autre bagarre encore tout. Gaz dans l'eau de l'île, puis bas prix, puis bon marché. Encore, c'est façon ça y est, ou capable d'aider pour toute information qui concerne l'eau de l'île avec commissionnaire Melissa Pedon. Eh bien, visitez l'eau de l'île, bar FL, point GOV. Pas oublier encore, non. Il tira le sot là, côté événement qui va faire là le 9 septembre. Si vous pouvez enregistrer pour voter, la meilleure fois. Si vous avez enregistré tout pour vous voter, bulletin pour vous. Dans la caillou, vous avez besoin d'enregistrer encore pour assurer les ou et yo moun yo a fait des bon travail et ça va le permettre tout moi même avec Melissa, n'a toujours des engouement pour nous porter des bonnes informations pour vous. Pas oublier. Abonnez avec chaîne télévision Loder Hill TV. Dis aux familles, dis aux amis, ça ne coûte rien. Vous comprenez? Dis aux familles, dis aux amis, abonnez avec Loder Hill TV. Chaque jeudi soir à 8h, depuis 8h, depuis 7h50, vous mettez tout le de côté et puis vous braquez sur Loder Hill TV. Vous pas gagner l'autre rendez-vous. Loder Hill TV, chaque jeudi soir avec Melissa Jane. Chaque jeudi soir, Loder Hill TV, c'est station favorable. Nous remettons en pile et nous disons fanatiques New York ou même qui toujours l'ensemble avec nous chaque jeudi soir. Nous disons un grand merci, un grand bisou parce que le travail là, il n'est pas capable de faire pour nous. Il est pour nous, demander pour nous tous nous rejoindre ensemble et puis pour nous capable de faire. Pas oublier, abonnez avec Loder Hill TV et toujours gain place ou même qui gagne business dans Loder Hill pour capable faire réclame gratis. Relais Melissa dans 954 279 38 93. Si vous besoin parler en créole tout ou capable de relais dans 954 383 95 45. C'est toujours un plaisir pour nous capable avec vous. Achetez dans la ville de Hill, faites gaz dans la ville de Hill. Faire business dans Ville de Hill et pour toutes ressources que vous avez besoin, visitez l'odehill.fl.gov. C'était un plaisir pour nous être capables ensemble avec vous après-midi. Nous remettons songer Melissa Pedon, Lidi, Lila pour le capable de servir. C'est pour ça que vous avez choisi l'île. Eh bien, Lila pour le servir, toujours supporter l'île dans l'initiative que l'île a fait. Melissa Jane, it's all yours. Thank you. So so much for the opportunity to always inform the community in regards to what is happening in the beautiful city of Lauder Hill. Ooh, wow. I knew that it was going to be a big one because we had a lot to talk about with Commissioner Dunn. Thank you so much, as always. Before you before you leave, before you leave, is your, is your camera blurry or is it my eyes? <laughs> let me just, before you leave, let me just uh, do this real quick. So I want to um, thank all of my sponsors. And if you'd like to be a sponsor, get in touch with me. The website is right there, lauderhilltv.com. The email is right there on that page or go to the Facebook page and uh, send me or, or send me a message uh, or call me. Um, I'll put that information up there. But um, thank you again, uh, Madeline. I want to thank my sponsors, um, South Florida Caribbean Connections. Sorry, South Florida Caribbean Conference. That is Samantha Lucrage. Together we make a difference. She is very, very much involved in the community. And she has an event that she would like to promote, which is the Healing Arts Institution of South Florida uh, Community Resource Fair on Saturday, September 23rd at 10 a.m. till 1. So that's at State Road uh, 7 in Tamarack. Uh, but she is a part of the Lauder Hill family too, yeah. friends of Lauder Hill. I also mm -hmm. want to be, give a big shout out and special thanks to People Profile Organization. They are a new sponsor with us, sharing the stories of ordinary people. They have their event, their award show coming up in September the 24th at um, September 24th. Just put you on mute. Um, and this is going to be held at the University of Fort, Lauder Fort Lauderdale, which is in the, I'm sorry, this is going to be held at the Faith Center, 5555 Northwest 95, 95th Avenue in Sunrise, Florida, starting at six, showtime at seven. So this is the award show 
happens every year. It is absolutely beautiful. And then my final sponsor who is still with us on this screen is our lovely Creole translator. Spon this, she's also a sponsor of the show and a member of the team, Madeline Noel, Lauder Hill Creole translator. I want to say a big thank you to uh, to Madeline Noel for always coming in and doing a translation at the end of the show. So I thank you for your patience, Madeline. Love you very much. And then I uh, speak. In, in lieu of your own business, we're going to just give a shout out to your church. <laughs> so if you would like to just give uh, a brief uh, talk about your church briefly in English and then just in Creole, just in a very short time. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, Christian Community Church of God, led by Bishop Dr. Christopher Lewis, uh, we're located 2052 Northwest 49th Avenue. We have a spectacular community health fair and bazaar that is free to the community this upcoming September 16th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then also September 17th from 1 p.m to 5 p.m. We are asking the community as a whole to just come and be a part of it. We'll be having free health screening. We'll be having the police and fire department that is there. We're going to have raffle. There will be food. Um, it's a great opportunity for the community to come together and definitely learn of the different resources that is available to you. So we would like for you to be a part of this event. All of the organizers are just ready to assist you, ready to provide resources. And we are also having a raffle. So if you would like to get your raffle tickets, you can call 954 735-4114. You can also call me as well because we need to get these raffle tickets. So we need your support because that is the way that we can help the community through the, um, the, the health fair and just all of the things that we're having on this day. We're asking the community to come and show up. Let's come and have a great time. There's also going to be an event where you'll have the opportunity to dunk our bishop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you do not want to miss this opportunity. I believe we also have Deacon Alwyn that you can dunk. So two <laughs> gentlemen, our bishop and the deacon, where you'll have the opportunity to dunk them. This is a way for the church to give back. Okay. Christian community church of God is not just about being inside the four walls, but we're about embracing the community, working closely with Lottie Hill six through 12 working. Just like I said, with um, feeding every Friday, we have Miss Hazel. She was on um, earlier, but um, feeding the yes, <laughs> Hazel. I feeding the community every Friday. She wow. is there bright and early Friday to feed the community. So come on down Fridays. But we just want to let you know that Christian Community Church of God, led by our very own Doctor. Bishop Christopher Lewis is here to serve you. We're literally, the doors are open every day, whether it's for prayer or um, just for assisting the community. We have on Wednesdays where we, we you, you know, you're, you're coming from work at six o'clock p.m. We have a nice meal prepared for you. And then you can bring your children in so that they can get homework help or what have you. So all of these things, you can find out additional information by coming to the health fair. We'll be more than willing, more than happy to just answer any questions that you have. And I am a proud member of Christian Community Church of God. And one of the reasons that drew me to Christian Community Church of God is their collaboration with the community. So great job, Dr. Bishop, um, Bishop Christopher Lewis and all of the members at um, CCCOG. Triple C-O-G, that's the place that you want to be. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> All right, I love that. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do um, one more time, and we're going to do this live on live on the show right now. I'm going to take myself down, and I want you to just do a one minute commercial of 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 this event. All right. 
Christian Community Church of God, nous localisés dans 20 secondes de Nord-Ouest, 49e Avenue, là dans l'Ode Hill. Nous gagnons 16 et 17 septembre. Nous avons gagné un foie de santé et côté où capable de venir pour joindre en pile information, en pile ressources qui a bénéficié ou qui a bénéficié famille. Nous t'arrêmes pour toute communauté à participer. Les gratuits pour participer, pour venir encore nous dire où se laisser et 17 septembre si Dieu veut pour toute information ou capable contacter moi 54 3 83 95 45 ou du moins ou capable reler 9 54 735 41 14 et bien docteur bishop Christopher Lewis ensemble avec tout staff Christian Community Church of God abtano pour capable participer dans événement ça Merci, merci, merci. I'm on mute, of course. Can we do that one more time in English? Just for just for one minute. Let me just uh, let me just set, set you up. Uh, let's put which screen I want. Your screen. Okay, that's the that's the screen I was looking for. And I'm going to give you the screen and just do uh, in English one more time. Good evening to our community. We want to invite you to the health fair and bazaar that Christian Community Church of God is hosting. We are located at 2052 Northwest 49th Avenue in Lauder Hill. Dr. Christopher Lewis and the entire staff of CCCOG awaits your presence Saturday the 16th of September in addition to Sunday the 17th. The times are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on that Saturday and 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. We're inviting the community to this free community health fair and bazaar. We will have free giveaways all day, free health screenings. We'll have the police department, we'll have... Um, the fire department there to provide you information. There'll be bounce houses, games, car wash, prizes and surprises. And most important, we have a raffle. Come and be a part of it. You'll also have the opportunity to dunk our bishop on that day, in addition to dunking one of our deacon, Deacon Alwyn. So come on and be a part of this free event, which is held on the 16th and the 17th of September, right here in Lottie Hill, 2052 Northwest 49th Avenue. This event is not only restricted to Lottie Hill residents, but it is open to all of our surrounding communities. So come on, enjoy, have a great time, and um, let's make this happen for our communities. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Madeline for doing that for us. I will wish you a good night. Sorry to keep you up so late tonight. My pleasure. <laughs> we'll talk soon, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, we are right, guys. This has been a very, very in-depth show. We might have to we might have to go two hours sometimes. Um, definitely, we had a lot to talk about with Commissioner Dunn. I am not going to go through any events with you tonight. But I have dropped the link to the Facebook group that has all of the events. So go there and check out all of the groups. Also, I have dropped to you, I have dropped the um, the website, lauderhilltv.com, lauderhilltv.com, lauderhilltv.com. Just go to that and click on the Facebook link. Again, if you're having trouble finding it, you'll see a Facebook link for the events. All right. Um, I bid you a wonderful night. I thank each and every one of you for tuning in tonight. There are many, many people that I will be getting in touch with to be on the show. And if you have a, you know, a story, you're, you're, you're part of Lauder Hill, you have an event coming up, you have a business, you have something that you would like to share on Lauder Hill TV, get in touch with me and we will have you. Yes, the scholarship plug, we're gonna have you on very, very soon again. You are a staple in the Lauder Hill community and we're gonna have you back at a better concept PR. We're gonna have you on. We're gonna have everybody that's in here at some point on Lauder Hill TV. We're here to share good news, 
good resources, amazing people. And uh, if you're also interested in our advertising packages, our promotional packages, go again to the website, lauderhilltv.com, and you can download the promotional and advertising packages. All right. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful day. My name is Melissa Jane. I'm your host. I'm the founder of Lauder Hill TV. And feel free to get in touch with me. We are out. Let's see. Is there a message in here? Is there a message in here? Good night. Oh, Samantha's just coming in. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Yay. Great job. Lauder Hill TV. Thank you so much. All right. Um, all right. I think that's all. Have a good night, everybody. And I'll see you next week on Lauder Hill TV at 8 o'clock. Tell a friend and save the post and also if you if you're coming in late if you came in late just go ahead and watch it from the beginning and um, see all of the amazing things we talked about today with commissioner melissa dunn all right have a good night everybody see you next week